In this presentation, we will take a look at the multiple choice questions applicable to merchandising companies. First question, 2-10 comma N-30 means A, 2% discount if paid in 10 days or full balance due in 30 days. B, 10% discount if paid in 2 days or full balance due in 30 days. C, 20% discount if paid in 10 days or full balance due in 30 days. Or D, 10% discount if paid in 30 days or full balance due in 30 days. So let's go through these one more time, crossing out what we can using the process of elimination. Question once again. 2 slash 10 comma in slash 30 means what? Now first we might want to think, okay, what does that mean first to us? And put that down in our, in our minds and then go through these and see what closely matches what we believe it to mean. So when you see this, this is going to be terms, typically terms of when payment should be due, uh, when, when we make a sale or uh, purchasing terms. So it typically will be in this kind of format and we just got to know what this format means. The trickiest piece of it is this first number means the discount. Now the discount, they didn't put a percent on it. It's just, they just basically put this two here and you got to know that it means 2%. So that's the trickiest piece of this kind of uh, way they write this. So 2% and then what does the 10 mean? That means that we're going to give you a 2% discount and it's basically a cash discount. It's a, it's a discount related to getting paid sooner. So recognizing the time value of money, we're saying if you give us the money sooner, then we'll give you a 2% discount. Meaning if you pay us within 10 days, we'll give you that 2% uh, discount. If not, then comma, if not, then the normal terms, the, the, that means the, when you normally have to pay us, is going to be the 30 days. So if you think about this, if you made a sale on account, uh, then we would typically say that we, we want to be paid within 30 days. That's standard, whatever that, that is. It could be 30, it could be 60, whatever the standard payment period is. Often 30 days. Uh, that'll be when we expect payment. If we don't get paid then, then uh, we might have collection action taken after that point. But uh, if you pay earlier, within two days, we uh, will give a discount for the time value of money for doing that. All right, so let's go through the answers. 2 slash 10 in slash 30 means process of elimination A, 2% discount if paid in 10 days or full balance due in 30 days. That seems exactly like what we were looking at, so that looks like the one. Let's look at the rest of them to make sure that we're not messing anything up though. B, 10% discount if paid in two days or full balance due in 30 days. Now a 10% discount looks a little backwards if we pay 10% discount in two days. You can think of that two ways. One, uh, it's just backwards because if you read this, it should be 2% discount in 10 days. And two, uh, a 10% discount when you're talking about a, a cash discount is pretty, pretty big because typically we're talking about a fairly small discount that might be applied to a large, uh, a large sales uh, for, for the time value of money for a cash discount. This isn't like a discount in a store uh, where we might have marked up the, the merchandise and, and then mark it way down for a discount. This isn't a negotiating the sales price discount. This is basically a, a cash discount to get paid a little bit sooner. Uh, so we're not going to give a huge 10% discount possibly just be, because we got paid uh, 20 days sooner. We might That might be a sales thing within the store, but th that seems awfully high. So that's not going to be it. And then C says 20% discount if paid in 10 days. Uh, or full balance due in 30 days and that just seems I don't see where the 20% came from at all so that doesn't seem right and then D says 10% discount if paid in 30 days or full balance due in 30 days and once again that 10% is is backwards so we're gonna say that doesn't seem right so the answer looks like A so if we read through this once again we're gonna say the question 2 slash 10 comma in slash 30 means what A 2% discount if paid in 10 days or full balance due in 30 days. Next question. The term cost of goods sold, A, means sale of inventory, B, is an asset, C, is used in a service company, D, is a revenue account, E, 
is the expense related to inventory being used to, to generate revenue. Let's read through this one more time and see if we can cross any of this out. We're going to say the term cost of goods sold. Now, again, you might want to just kind of define that in your mind, of course. What is cost of goods sold to you before we go through this? And note that what it is, it's going to be an income statement account. It's basically an expense account. It's going to therefore bring down net income and it's related to the inventory account. So it's related to inventory uh, being used in order to help us generate revenue. So if we go through these, then we're going to say the term cost of goods sold, A, means sale of inventory. Now you might look at that and go, hey, kind of. I mean, that cost of goods sold means that we did sell inventory. So because that's we're recording the cost of the sale of the inventory. So let's keep that for now. And B says uh, is an asset. So and we should be able to say, well, cost of goods sold, not an asset. The related asset account is inventory, an asset. But cost of goods sold is an expense related to us consuming that asset. So I'm going to say that that doesn't sound right. C says is used in a service company. So C is used in a service company. The cost of goods sold relates to us selling inventory and a, a service company doesn't have any inventory. So we're going to say, no, it, sh it shouldn't be in a service company. They shouldn't have cost of goods sold. And then D is a revenue account, uh, a revenue account cost of goods sold, and it's an expense account. So cost of goods sold is decreasing net income. It relates to us consuming the uh, inventory in order to generate revenue expense account, not a revenue account. And then E says, is the expense related to inventory being used to generate revenue? And that sounds pretty good. So we're left with A and E. So if we read through this one more time, the term cost of goods sold, either A or E, A means sale of inventory, or E is the expense related to inventory being used to generate revenue. Now, of those two, uh, if we record cost of goods sold, it seems like we did sell inventory because that's why we're recording it. Uh, but E sounds better. And oftentimes, uh, if you look at these multiple choice questions, when you see a really specific answer as opposed to answers that aren't as specific, that could mean that the person putting together the, the question is trying to, uh, m you know, make any make a make an answer that doesn't have any. Um, possibilities or times when it's not true and therefore they have to add a few more words so if you see a really specific answer that sounds pretty good as compared to another answer which is a little too short and uh, compared to it it might be the more specific answer because the more specific answer is designed to be right in all cases which means it might take a little more terminology so we're, we're going to say it's going to be e here and so if we read through this we're going to say the term cost of goods sold E is the expense related to inventory being used to generate revenue. Next question. A debit to the sales returns and allowance and a credit to accounts receivable. One more time. A debit to sales returns and allowances and a credit to accounts receivable. A makes accounts receivable go up. B is part of a journal entry for a return of merchandise. C is a journal entry related to a sale at a discount. D is recorded when a customer takes a discount. Or E is a journal entry related to the payment of accounts receivable. So one more time, this question will be a debit to sales returns and allowances and a credit to accounts receivable is what? So before we go through these, we might want to think about what that might be. If we, and to do this, you might want to actually write this out. Uh, it's often helpful to see this in journal entry format. So you might just want to say, okay, accounts receivable and just make up a number possibly is going down or credit of 800. And then we debit something for the sales return. So sales return. And that, that might make it say, huh, if you've worked a couple problems, you might say, hmm, I, you know, I might have seen that somewhere. One, accounts receivable is going down. Why would accounts receivable go down? Well, typically we get paid and therefore the customer no longer owes us the money and we decrease the accounts receivable. However, in this case, we didn't debit cash, meaning we didn't get paid. We debited instead sales returns and allowances. Now, what is that? Uh, it, it's, it's basically reversing. It's the sales account that it's this contra account that reverses the sale. So what's happening is for whatever reason, 
it's an income statement account we're reducing basically the sales here which possibly probably happened because of a return you know we had to reverse the sale for some happened something happened so the sale didn't really happen meaning we're basically not giving the money back they didn't give us money the customer didn't give us money we are saying you no longer owe us money because we're just whatever the sale just never happened basically we're taking it off the books okay so a makes accounts receivable go up and we have a credit to accounts receivable that makes accounts receivable go down so that doesn't look right B is part of a journal entry to return or entry for a return of merchandise. Now that could be one reason why the accounts receivable would go down and we're not getting cash, but in, in other words, in, instead recording something to the sales returned and allowance. So that one looks like it's a possibility. C is a journal entry related to a sales discount, sale at a discount. And this isn't really a sale happening because accounts receivable would be going up if we made a sale. So whether it be a discount or not, it's not really uh, looking like that. D is recorded when a customer takes a discount. Uh, you, you know, we might say well, if there's a discount, we could say, yeah, accounts receivable would go down. But the other side going to sales returns doesn't look quite right uh, if, if we had a discount. So you might be questioning that could be some one that we would question and say, hmm, you know, it, it might be the case that if there's a discount, we would decrease the receivable because they, you know, they don't owe us as much because they got a discount. And then E, so we'll keep that one for now. E says, is a journal entry related to the payment of accounts receivable. And it does have accounts receivable going down. So you think, hmm, that seems kind of reasonable, but we didn't get paid because that would be a debit to cash. Instead, we got this, um, this sales returns and allowances. So I'm going to say that doesn't seem right because it didn't get cash. So if we're left with B and D, reading the question one more time. A debit to sales returns and allowances and a credit to accounts receivable is either A or D. A is part of a journal entry for a return of merchandise or D is recorded when a customer takes a discount. So I, I'm going to say that A sounds more reasonable because uh, we're going to say that we reduced sales and uh, we put the sales returns account here, which typically uh, you would think we're reversing the sale if the merchandise was returned to us. So the customer returned the merchandise, we decreased the accounts receivable and record the other side there. Now, so I'm gonna say B is the answer. Now, uh, notice that D uh, is similar to C here. C says, C says is a journal entry related to the sale at a discount. And D says recorded when a customer takes a discount. And if we think that those two are related, they're not exactly related or not exactly the same. But note that if you do see two that are kind of similar or pretty much the same thing, that we can only choose one answer. So you could use the process of elimination in cases like that. Okay, reading the final answer then, we have the question of a debit to sales returns and allowances and a credit to accounts receivable is A or B, B, is part of a journal entry for a return of merchandise. Next question. Which is true of inventory shrinkage? A. Inventory shrinkage is the loss of inventory. B. Inventory shrinkage can be found by comparing a physical count with amount on record. C. Inventory shrinkage is recognized by debiting miscellaneous expense. D. Inventory shrinkage is recognized by debiting cost of goods sold. And C, inventory shrinkage can be caused by theft or uh, deterioration. One more time, which is not true of inventory shrinkage. So we got to first, it might be helpful to see if we know the definition of inventory shrinkage and then go through and see if we can apply that definition out. So inventory shrinkage usually has to do with the inventory going down for some reason, reason other than a sale. So remember that uh, obviously inventory is going to go down when we make sales, but uh, there could be some other components decreasing inventory. One of those components might be, you know, we just lost it, spoiled, we lost it, it could be theft or something like that, uh, that, that inventory would go down. We'd have to, of course, record that when it happens. So let's go through these and see if we can use the process of elimination. Once again, question of which is not true of inventory shrinkage? A, inventory shrinkage is the loss 
of inventory. So we're looking at something that's not true. So inventory shrinkage is the loss of inventory. So that's kind of true. We lost something, you know, something it might have spoiled or something like that, but we lost the inventory. We didn't sell it in, in any case. We, so we lost it somehow. We got to write it off in some way. B, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that's true and I'm going to cross it out. B says inventory shrinkage can be found by comparing a physical count with the amount on record. And that is in, indeed the case of how we find the inventory shrinkage. We're going to look at you, you know, what we think we have in terms of our bookkeeping, uh, calculating uh, uh, what, we, what we are doing, especially in a perpetual inventory system, and compare that to a physical count. The difference then, if it's less than, which it often is, is due to something happening. Theft, spoilage, something. So we're going to say that that's, uh, looks correct, so I'm going to cross that out. C, inventory shrinkage is, is recognized by debiting the miscellaneous expense. So that, I mean, if we don't know how to, how to record that, we might think, hmm, I don't know, because we're going to obviously have to decrease inventory, and inventory is a debit balance. We're going to decrease it with a credit. And then we're going to debit something, and I don't know, miscellaneous expense, possibly. Where do we want to put it? Don't know. So I'm going to leave that for now. D, we're going to say inventory shrinkage is recognized by debiting cost of goods sold. And we have the same kind of issue there. Well, we know inventory kind of went down, so we're probably going to have to credit inventory to decrease it. We're going to debit something, but cost of goods sold, you might think, well, hmm, you know, that relates to us selling inventory to help generate revenue and we didn't really sell it here it kind of got lost or something or stolen or, or you know it's spoiled so i'm going to leave that for now e says inventory shrinkage can be caused by theft or deterioration and i believe that is correct it could deteriorate or be thefted or spoil or something like that and so i'm going to say that sounds correct so i'm not going to say it's that one so we're going to left with c and d Reading the question one more time, we have, which is not true of inventory shrinkage? C, inventory shrinkage is recorded by debiting miscellaneous expense, or D, inventory shrinkage is recognized by debiting cost of goods sold. So we're just basically down to what type of journal entry do we have? We know we're going to credit inventory to decrease it. Where's the debit going to go? Now, it could we could say miscellaneous or cost of goods sold. Now miscellaneous is where we put something that's small and we and we don't know where else to go. So that seems like kind of reasonable that you know if it's this doesn't something not something that's going to happen normally. Uh, so uh, we might think that. And the cost of goods sold is usually what we put when we make the sale. So they both seem kind of you know if you didn't have any idea they both seem kind of reasonable. But the cost of goods sold is actually what we're we're going to use here. And whenever you think of inventory. Uh, the, the, the related expense account, the inventory, the asset account, the related expense account is always cost of goods sold. So that's going to be our first kind of go-to area. The reasoning that we're going to put it in the cost of goods sold, even though it's not a sale, is, is because the same reason that we would put it into a miscellaneous is it's small. And if it is small, then we're just going to say it's immaterial to decision making. And therefore, we're going to put it to the normal account that's related to inventory to uh, the cost of goods sold account in this case.